Hello, everyone. Let's see if I can set this up and talk at the same time. I'm Randy Schoenberg. I am an attorney. You gotta get to it. I'll, I'll do it. I got it. I got it. Uh, I'm an attorney and uh, from Los Angeles. I have been a genealogist like Adam since I was a little kid and spoke to my grandmother. Shortly before my 11th birthday, I pieced together four poster boards and with me largely in the center, much to the consternation of my siblings, I built a big family tree, which I thought was big. It had 300 people on it. Raise your hand if you have a tree of more than 300 people. Right. Okay. So, uh, but I was 11, 10, 11, and uh, I continued. Um, over the years, people contacted us, I found new information, I added new things, I uh, put together uh, a tree of maybe several thousand people, I put it up on the internet. There was a man named David Solomon who had typed in the entire um, Neil Rosenstein unbroken chain, which I somehow connected to, so I added that using reunion. Suddenly I had a 50,000 person tree. And then I was invited in 2008 to Chicago to the IAJGS uh, to be the keynote speaker and I stopped by a table in the exhibit hall and I picked up a card from one of the exhibitors from a small unknown to me company called Genie. Com. And the card stood on my desk uh, right there for several months. In February of 2009, I decided to give it a try. I had heard some chatter about these online trees, uh, didn't want to necessarily keep doing it myself, and so I uploaded my file to Genie. I actually did it twice by accident. Uh, unbeknownst to me, I'm sorry, this mic is going in and out. Unbeknownst to me, that was one of the largest uploads that Jeannie had received, especially in the Jewish world. And uh, immediately, because Jeannie is a largely public tree uh, that is searchable over the web, I would be contacted now by all sorts of people who have connections to this giant tree that Neil Rosenstein put together uh, 10, 15 years earlier. And they were all building their tree on Genie. And they were all wanting to connect to this giant 50,000 person tree. And so sooner or later, this tree that I uploaded was also uh, merged together because Genie allows merging. And it was merged into what they call the big tree. So uh, let me step aside for a second and say, uh, let's ask everybody. So you all have more than 300 people on your tree. Who has more than 1,000 people on your tree? Okay. Uh, who has more than, keep your hands up, please. Sorry, it won't go too long. Who has more than 2,000? Who has more than 5,000? Who has more than 10,000? Okay. Who has 72 million people on their tree? Okay. okay. So, this is the new big bang in, in my experience. And Adam talked about getting a different perspective. Uh, this is something new. I, I've been explaining it to people coming by our booth all week. You know, when it rains, it rained today, they're first they're little tiny drops and then some form a puddle, they join together and then there's a pond and then maybe comes a lake, right? And gets bigger. Well, that's the big tree on Genie. It sort of sucks up everybody into this giant tree. And it's now over 72 million profiles. The, there are 2.9 million users connected to this tree, taking part in it. They add 7 million new profiles a year to this tree, right? So now it's 72 million. When we come back next year, it'll probably be around 80 million. The next largest trees that exist now are at We Relate and Wikitree. Uh, there are about five million or two million. As Adam mentioned, Family Search has started a collaborative tree, but they're just starting it. The Mormons are industrious, but I'm not sure that they're going to be able to catch Genie. And I think recognizing the value of this brand new phenomenon, this enormous collaborative tree, uh, Genie was purchased by MyHeritage last year, at the end of the last year. And uh, now, Genie, which before was really just a place to build your tree, now also has access to all the data that MyHeritage has. So again, not everything is free. You can start for free. 
but if you purchase a MyHeritage data plan, you can now access all the census data, all the billion graves, all of those things, and attach them to your tree. So it, it makes it more comparable to what previously existed on Ancestry and MyHeritage. Uh, those sites allow you to build your tree, allow you to invite collaborators to your tree, but it's not enormous, right? It doesn't get beyond a few thousand because you're doing all the work yourself, basically. Uh, only on Genie do you have this sort of merging, this worldwide merging together phenomenon. Um, and for those of us who, who have discovered Genie and work on it, it's, it's completely addictive. And b because you find that, sure, we're all stopped in our research in many different branches, right? But if you go sideways a little bit and work on what we used to think of as someone else's tree, but right now it's connected to us, uh, but someone else's tree, right? So your, give you an example, your grandfather had a brother who had a wife, right? She's your great aunt. Not a blood relation. Used to be, I would say, what do I care? I got enough to worry about with my blood relatives, right? What do I care about her? But she has a family. If she's important enough to be on the tree, on my tree, I should know about her. I should know who her parents are. I should know who her siblings are. I should know uh, who their children are because you know what? they probably have pictures of my grandfather because they're related to his brother. They were at the wedding, right? They have all of these things. They may know him. They may have stories. And once you realize that everybody on the tree has an importance and has his or her own immediate tree, then you just keep going and you just go and go and go. So you find that you're interested in everybody. I've found that this, uh, and Jeannie has a facility for this, this has allowed me to look at genealogy in a completely different way. So previously, I would look at my tree, and it goes back to certain towns. They happen to be mostly in Bohemia and Moravia. And I would go onto Jewish Gen, and I'd enter in those towns and those surnames on the Jewish Gen family finder, right? Just my blood relatives. And on the Jewish Gen family finder, you can search under a town, you can see other people researching certain surnames, right? We all have our surnames on our, right? But if you might not recognize that you have a close connection because if one person's a Brown and the other person's a Schoenberg, you're not entering the surname of the, the two siblings who married each other, right? The, let's say they had sisters and they both married someone named Schwartz and you could be just a couple steps away and not really recognize it. On Genie, what they've done now is they've set up projects, and I wanted to attempt on this computer to go live and show you what Genie projects are and what we're doing in, the, in, in about 10 minutes. So if you bear with me, I'm gonna try to do that. By the way, this is a beautiful quote from Thoreau. I thought since we're here in Boston, it would be really nice to look at, but it, it gives you an idea of what, why there's sort of been a resistance to this, right? We all have a very short time frame. Thoreau talked about it almost 200 years ago, uh, we look back maybe 200 years, right? And that's about it, right? We think that's the horizon. And it's manageable. 200 years ago, we have 32 great, great, great grandparents, something like that. That's a manageable number. If you go back another 200, 300 years, now you're starting talking about thousands of ancestors, right? And that's just too much for us to, to think about. We don't have the records for it. so we try to think small. But if we start thinking a little bit further back, new things happen. So let me get out of this now and show you what I mean, if I can. Hold your breath. Whoops, there we go. Okay. So Genie allows you to set up projects. Any user, free user, you don't have to pay, you can set up a project, you can call it anything, okay? Clowns of the Ringling Brother Circus, okay? And you can identify everybody who's been a clown in Ringling Brothers. Uh, but what you can do is then link to that person's family tree. And on the person's profile, each person has a profile on Genie. That person can be linked to the project. So over time, there were a lot of Jewish-related projects. So I decided to set up an umbrella, a portal, to aggregate all of the Jewish projects on Genie so you could find them, right? And because everybody's working on their own little thing and not realizing how many projects there are. So I organized it a little bit like Jewish gens organized. And we have uh, some thematic ones like the biblical tree, 
So they're, they're people, they're curators, who all they do is protect the integrity of the biblical tree and make sure people don't add spurious descendants of Abraham, okay, and things like that. Um, I set up a project about the Holocaust. Let me show you what that looks like, if this works. Um, so I'm also the president and acting executive director of the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust. So this is something I'm very interested in. So I set up a number of other curators and, and many collaborators have taken part uh, an index to all of these sub-projects on the various camps, ghettos, transit camps, et cetera, okay? So uh, if you go to one of them, let's see, you wanna go to, sorry, go to Auschwitz Project, uh, you'll see there are 92 collaborators, that's over here, there are 5,000 people who have been added so far to the Auschwitz Project. These are all relatively new and they're growing every day. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, I've organized these, there's rabbinic, Sephardic, but mainly geographically, so North and South American. Uh, Adam mentioned first American Jewish families by the famous Malcolm Stern, so Kevin Hunnett, who's over here, uh, pretty much single-handedly entered in all of the families, oops, from that book. So basically any, any name or family in Malcolm Stern's book, you can now find on Genie, and you can look at the family if you're interested in, I don't know, whatever, Bach? No, I won't even go there. I'll show you other families, but it's it's 600 something families, right? And the entire book's here now. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you connect to one of these families, if someone in your family marries someone who's connected to these families, you can find them on using this directory. Okay. So let's keep going. So then for the geographic projects, you have Eastern Europe, the Belarusians have been very active. There are all these different projects about various families and various towns. The Galicians, not quite so active. Some areas, Latvia, Lithuania, have just the name of the sub-project here, Latvian Jews or Guide to Jewish Lithuania, where you have to go there and then find the town on that page. Uh, that's similarly what I've done, and I'll show you uh, for the Jewish communities of Bohemia and Moravia. Or you can click here and you go to a project. This is, anybody can do this. I'm gonna build one in front of you so you can see how easy it is. But let me show you. So for all the towns in Moravia, there are 52 Jewish communities, we have a project, okay? And for each project, you can click on it. Here's an example from Akoyatine. Not a big town, okay? But we have some information. There were, uh, how many families? 78 families. And you can see about half of them are blue, so you can click on them. These are the Lerventals, which are my family. You go to the someone on the family. This is my fifth great uncle. I click on his tree, okay? And if it comes up, you'll see the tree. Now, what I've found doing this is that everybody in these towns is connected. There is not a, a small town like this where you cannot connect a person to anybody, any other person because they lived there for hundreds of years. Now our records go back to about 1780, so it gives us a, just a short time period between then and World War II to connect everybody. But you can be certain when a community started in 1500 or 1400 and you're coming in now, dropping in around 1800, that even if they have a different surnames that they pick up in 1800, they are all cousins. They all have common ancestors, right? So do you, the, you think of these people as different families? No, if you're going back in that town, unless your ancestors just arrived there yesterday, you're related to everybody in that town by blood. And if you go further out, you can do the same thing in the whole community. Right, with the neighboring towns because the daughter here marries the son there and there's a, all, suddenly a connection and everybody descends from that connection. Okay, so let's, how do you build a project like this for your town? You go, and again, this is free. It's like a wiki model. Genie has pay features, but this is not one of them. Okay. You go to the projects page, which you get to by going under research and projects. I'm gonna to try to walk you through this, it's gonna be five minutes and then I'm done, okay? So you go to this projects page, whoops, come on, there we go. And you click on this green thing on the right here, I clicked on start a new project. 
and I'm going to make the project for Lemberg, which doesn't have Jewish families from, well, I'm going to call it Lviv, okay, and I put in parentheses Lemberg or Lvov, right, uh, and where is it now? Ukraine, okay, and I'm going to give it a description, and I'm going to say this project seeks to collect, I can't type, collect all of the Jewish families from the town, it's more than a town actually, of Lemberg or Lviv or whatever you want to call it. Okay, we can edit it later. Okay, now in the Ukraine, okay, formerly Galicia. Okay, and you can see how challenged I am of typing and it still works. And I click on create project and it's creating the project. Okay. And it's done, and I could share this on Twitter if I knew how to do that. I could share it on Facebook, but I don't want to. And I click done. Okay, And there's the project. Okay, It's a little bit empty right now. Uh, right? I can add a related project. Uh, this will, it's a little cumbersome because I am a member of so many projects that I get a list that's this long. So I'm going to go, I'm going to link it to, uh, if I can find the Jewish genealogy portal, uh, there it is, okay. So it's now linked to the Jewish genealogy portal, the portal is linked to this. But I wanna find, uh, I wanna find someone to attach to this project and find maybe some other collaborators. Okay, so how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna go up here and go to Google. I promise you this won't take too long. If I can type Google, I probably could just search right from the browser there, but I'll, I'll show you what it's like just going to Google. And I'm going to say Lviv, that's the current town name, and I say plus site genie.com. See what happens. Okay, so Chaim HaKohen Rappaport sounds Jewish, right? R Rabbi of Slepsk and Lviv. So maybe he wants to be part of the Lviv project, so I click on him. That's, he's number two there, right? And I go here, and ooh, Adam added him. See, he's managed by Adam and added by Adam. How do you know Rabbi uh, Chaim HaKohen Rappaport? Who knows? Rappaport. You're a Rappaport. Okay, so we go add to project, okay? And I go here and I type in Lemberg. Whoops, there it is, Lemberg. And I'm done, okay? And he is now attached to this project. And you know, I know Adam's now interested in Krakow. Didn't know that before. I mean, in Lemberg, sorry, in Lemberg. So I'm gonna click on Adam's name here. He's a collaborator of mine. And I'm going to go under Actions. I'm gonna invite him to the project. Okay, and he's gonna get a little message when he logs into Genie, which he does every three minutes. Okay, <laughs> okay. and it's gonna say, do you wanna join? And he'll say yes, because he always says yes. And he's going to be a collaborator on the Lem Lemberg project, okay? And I could invite other people in the, in the similar fashion. Uh, I just go back to the list, right? And here's some other ones. This one looks Baila Rivka Austin, right? Not everybody with, from Lviv is gonna be Jewish, but you gotta use your brain, okay? So if her name is Baila Rivka, okay? It's probably Jewish. And I'm going to add her to the project. Okay, I'm going to go here and add her to the project. You know, you're limited by how fast your internet speed is. And I go to Lemberg. Okay, and you can do this ad nauseum. Okay, uh, let me finish this and show you then what it looks like when when you're done. Okay, so here are the projects, and here is one for Krakow. Pam Karp is one of the curators. She took over this project. It was started in October, okay, so not 100 years ago. And it has, what does it have, 1,000 something families linked up? 14 and a profiles connected. It lists 1,000 different families, et cetera. You need to do this for your towns. You need to set up these projects. You need to invite people to join your projects. I went on to Jewish Gen and looked at Jewish Gen Family Finder. There are 1,600 people who are researching 
Lemberg. Okay? They need to collaborate and work together and use this technology to link their families together. You would be amazed at what it will end up looking like. Thank you very much. I want you to, to before I finish, the, the upcoming issue of Avotenu has a, a version of Adam's talk and my talk. And, uh, and so if you don't subscribe to Avotenu, you probably should if you want to get some more information about this new phenomenon and this new Big Bang. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, we can. We have time for questions. Line up. Ten minutes. I, I, I agree with everything that my cousin Adam has said, both what I understand and what I do not understand. And by the way, I have a cousin who is married into a family from Piro Uh I'm a bit of a Neanderthal, so I still believe that the most important thing you have to do is to make sure that there are no errors in your database, whether it's your definitive database, such as my brother's keeper for DOS, or whether it's the websites, the charts, look? and yeah. so on. My Thank you. My experience with Jenny has been limited, yeah. and it, besides that it makes my ADD kick in, I've gone there, I've seen things that people have done, I've gone back later, and what was wrong before is now wrong, but different wrong. Okay. Until you can solve that. Okay. So the best way to make your tree accurate is to let the three million other users on Genie take a look at it and fix it. And I guarantee you, and I'll, if you want, you can come up, the Genie tree is more accurate than any other tree in almost every other instance. And uh, it's just the way it works. It's the same reason, your, your argument is the same argument that people made against Wikipedia. It would never replace World Book. It would never replace Encyclopedia Britannica. I'm telling you, those two institutions are no longer printing anymore. Uh, crowdsourcing is the way to gain the power of thousands of people in your research. And uh, if you, it's not for everybody. Uh, not everybody plays well with others. Not everybody wants to deal with problems. And there are certainly problems. There's no doubt you're going to have errors in a tree. Excuse me, if you could be quiet for a second. In a tree of 72 million profiles, and by the way, Adam and I have each entered by hand about 50,000 of those. I have about 100,000 profiles that I manage. There is no doubt that there are numerous errors. If you, if, I, I don't know how much data you've entered, but if you enter 100,000, if my error rate is just 1%, then there are 1,000 profiles with mistakes. Uh, the neat thing about Genie is that I have three million people looking for those mistakes. I get emails every day, messages on Genie every day correcting things in the tree. And my tree is a hundred times more accurate now than it would be if it were sitting on my desk using only my eyes as a proofreader. So please let's let some other, some other people ask questions. Well, I'm going to, my thrust is probably a little different than some of you. My cousin Israel Pickholtz and I, who have been collaborating for many years, only know we're cousins because our DNA matches. Okay, we have some common surnames. We don't know how we're related, but we know we're related because we have proof that we're related. Now, to me, our relationship is more important to me than our knowing exactly what day our common ancestor was born. I have numerous examples. My father-in-law, who went through the camps in Hungary, thought his entire family was killed. I put his tree on Genie. 
and the children of five of his first cousins in Sydney, Haifa, London, California, all put their trees on Jimmy. And one morning we all woke up and all of us, we all matched each other and now we reassembled our trees and far more important than reassembling our trees, we reassembled our family. And I would posit to you that reassembling our Jewish world is significantly more important than knowing whether someone was born in 1864 or 1865. So I would say and I'm gonna tell you, our children and our grandchildren will feel the exact same way. And, and I accept that there will be people who are very focused on whether he came over on the Campania or the Carpathia, but I would suggest to you that there are much bigger issues and much higher priorities for our Jewish community. That is reestablishing, using genealogy as a tool for reestablishing Kalal Yisrael than there is worrying about every little detail. I will tell you that every day, I will tell you, I will tell you every day, I have a book of 20,000 people that was a very highly regarded, very highly regarded work of scholarship, a family tree. And I added this family tree with 10 collaborators on Tajini, exactly as written. We found that two dozen families had already entered their trees on Tajini. We merged them into our tree, and I would say we made perhaps 500 corrections to the book published, to the scholarly book in which it was based. I will also tell you that I'm the manager of a DNA project with 2,000 individuals in it, in which we've studied major dynasties in the Jewish community, and I can tell you that our DNA studies have entirely disproven almost every major rabbinic genealogy that we've run across, and only because I don't believe in changing people's traditions have I not made this publicly available, but I will tell you that the most of our genealogies are approximations, and any notion that any of us have genealogies that are 100% accurate is a fiction. And we just do the best we can. Thank you. Uh, a brief comment and, and two questions. I don't see that there's any problem in having collaborative on the internet and still keeping our own proprietary family tree that we can put up on this is a way to find other members, as I was looking at you the other day. Yes. My concern about this is, and it's, and I'm, I guess I'm more confused about it. If I put up uh, a relative of mine, and someone else matches to that relative, is also on his. When I put it up, whose data, like if we have conflicting data with different sources, someone actually has a birth certificate, someone else is just using. SSDI, and I go on, is someone going to change what I'm calling my data? Can someone go on and change my birthday? Okay, there are two kinds of conflicts that I've found that I've run across. One is data that's just wrong, and that's easy to fix, and we fix it all the time. People, not everyone, <laughs> not everyone is computer literate, I've discovered. So there's, there are whole cultures in this world that haven't figured out how to use the caps lock key yet. Um, and there's also more important, interesting things, which are actual conflicts of information. And I have found over the years, I mean, one of the things is when I got started in Ancestry, there would be, of any 10 trees of one family, nine of them would be wrong. Uh, there'd be conflicts all over the place. And one of the things that makes Jeannie, really the beautiful thing about Jeannie is, these conflicts are brought to the surface. And we deal with these conflicts. And we have a conversation about these conflicts. If there's one person said he was born in 1893, another person says he was born in 1895, we post both pieces of data. Okay, that, that's a conversation worth having. If it's an irreconcilable conflict, like there's two Moishe Schleimbergs from Kiev, with different parents, well, then we have a way of preserving that conflict because it's unresolved. So we love conflict. I mean, it's, it's, it creates conversation because to me, the most important thing about genealogy are the conversations. So, are the sources actually listed on there? So I yes, what I, what I will typically do is do a print screen of my source and, and attach it as a photographic image right to, my, to the profile. And we put a, and, and if, you attack, if it's an irreconcilable difference, between two people who can't work it out, the curators will come in and we'll lock that profile and we'll explain the problem. And we'll start a discussion group on Genie between the people where they can actually discuss these issues.
if you are a Genie member, you can attach a source to that person. Thank you. Okay. We're, yeah, we're going to remain behind to answer all questions as long as we're done by six. <laughs> so if you don't mind, they're, 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 wrap, they're, they're required us to wrap up. Thank you all. This is the finest, con, con, finest IAJGS conference I've ever been to, and I thank the, I thank the organizers. Hi, everyone. This is the first time I've raised.